What's up everybody, blessed be and welcome back. My name's Manon and you're watching Witch in the Working where we will be discussing all things witchy in, around, throughout and about, above, below and beyond. So, for a lot of us, we're extremely passionate about our craft life so to speak. Nothing is taken with a grain of salt and there is no coincidence in our journeys through the cycles. In this episode, I want to dabble on your craft name, how to discover yours and how to properly spell it using magic. That being said, roll the intro. Welcome back everybody, bust out your calculators or your cell phones and let's get cracking on this episode about your craft name and the associations using numerology. For many of you, you may be starting your life as a new witch. If so, this episode is going to be awesome for you because we're going to be able to guide you towards choosing a magical name. If you are a seasoned witch, then check out your magical name and see where it lands on the scope of using numerology to link your name and life number together. You may even be inspired or jostled into changing the spelling a little to make the two fall into synchronicity with each other or not. Either way, it's a very interesting episode. If you're a new witch, part of making your transition from your old mundane life to this new magical, mysterious, mind-opening, exciting journey of a witch life is to choose a magical name. This name will act as a new starting point, so to speak, as that was my old life and this is my new life and journey moving forward. Many witches choose a name that they feel reflects their innermost desires of worship and magic. They mostly choose a name that suits their magical personality. Are you a witch who really loves working out in nature and doing ritual in the woods or forest? Then you may want to choose a name appropriate for those actions, desires, and callings. Are you a witch who works with special materials or tools, so to speak, magically? Then an appropriate name may be reflected around these personal desires you embrace. Some witches name themselves after a god or goddess or maybe even a demigod or demigoddess associated with the particular tradition of witchcraft they practice. Some witches name themselves after a natural act of nature. It's completely up to you. As with most things in Wicca, you do you. This choosing of a new name should not be taken lightly. This is a name that you may use for the rest of your craft life. I chose my magical name, Mananen, way back when I was 18 years old. It took me about two months to settle on this. Ultimately, I love the ocean and I love horses. While flipping through an old Time Life book on gods and goddesses, I came across Mananen McLear, an Irish sea god who had a self-navigating boat called Wave Sweeper and rode upon a great horse called Imbar who could traverse on top of the water as well as land. So to me, that was just cool. So I had my name. I ultimately shortened my name to Manon over the years simply because too many of my fellow community witches had problems pronouncing Mananen and I simply started telling everybody, hey, just, just call me Manon and, and it kind of stuck. My true craft name is Mananen. This being said, it's not set in stone that you have to keep your same craft name for your whole life. Many witches go through a few craft names in a lifetime, especially those who go through life transitions and feel that it's necessary for themselves to change things up a bit. And again, no better way of doing this than starting with what you are called. I suggest you journey with your name. What I mean by this is just don't grab any name out of thin air and go with it immediately. Think about it for a while. Maybe even make a small list of names that connect with you and break those down even to a smaller list. Once you have a few names or a name chosen, journey with that name for a few days or even weeks. Do research on the name you've chosen. Look it up and study it thoroughly. Get to know its ins and outs, ups and downs. Upon doing this, you're in essence also opening yourself up, your energies of receiving to these energies. This will cause you to experience these particular energies in a more profound, deeper state of consciousness and awareness, whether you realize it or not. This will start to produce vibrations, energies, visions, and circumstances that will play out and affect your subconscious mind in waking and in dream state. This in fact now starts you journeying with your name. It's very simple. You started the successful process of a journey. 
You can in fact journey with many things throughout your craft life using this method. Open up to it, give it attention, and it will give back. Let's talk a little bit about names. Names are very important and always have been. There's a great power and energy in names and in fact of knowing someone's name. It was believed and still is in many cultures that to know someone's name is to have power over them. It was believed that if you knew the name of your enemy, you could conjure with it. In some cultures, a mother would never use the real name of her child and would only call her child by a nickname. She believed that if she used the child's real name, that spirits could ultimately learn the child's name and call the child away from her to an uncertain doom. You don't have to keep your witch name a secret from others, but you may want to just use your witch name around like-minded peoples. You can, of course, use your birth name as your witch name too. This is very rare, and I've never seen it done, but not at all out of the question. I would make sure your name, either way, whether you use your birth name or choose a witch name, works out numerology-wise, which I will explain in a few minutes. Also, your name may consist of more than one word. For instance, storm moon, or gray owl, or rising seas, whatever. I prefer one name myself, but I've seen it both ways and neither one is less or more than the other. It's all about your liking. There is no need to preclude your name with the word witch either. This is an odd thing that relatively gained popularity via cheap novels and TV shows. It is, however, common in some traditions of witchcraft for a woman to prefix her name with lady. For instance, Lady Thelema or Lady Rowan, etc. For the most part, this prefix does not apply to men of the craft meaning the word Lord isn't really something that occurs in many traditions. So let's discuss numerology at this point and how to use numerology to help spell or even choose your magical name. First, what is numerology? Numerology is the idea and system that the cosmos and your life is affected by your birth date, birth name, and many other factors surrounding an individual. It's believed that the universe is a system and once broken down, we're left with the basic elements, which are numbers. These numbers can be used to help us to better understand the world and ourselves as individuals. And again, as witches, there are no coincidences in our life journeys. Everything is there and happens for a reason, mostly for us to learn the lessons of the goddess that she imposes upon us to strengthen and grow mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in this life and future lives to come. Numerology can help us understand why we are who we are in this life. And the best part is to help us to make life decisions moving forward and make choices in our lives magically instead of just on a wing and a prayer. No one really knows where numerology truly stemmed from. It is for sure a mystery as to its history, yet we do know that it dates back to as far as the ancient Egyptians and Babylonians, where some of the earliest written records can be found reflecting this evidence. Also, numerology has been discovered as being used amongst many cultures, including Greece, China, Rome, and Japan. Today, numerology is largely credited to Pythagoras, a Greek philosopher, as the main contributor to the modern day practice of numerology. Dr. Julian Stenton, however, was actually the person who coined the name of this practice as numerology. The popularity and the awareness of numerology can largely be credited to the gentleman Julian Stenton. Okay, so let's get started with the calculations. There are upwards of five numbers that numerology really focuses on, but for your craft name, we're primarily concerned with calculating just two. These being your birth number or your life path number and your name number or expression number. So to get started, let's calculate your birth number. Take your birthday, for instance. Mine is December 5th, 1972. So, we turn this into a numerical set of numbers as shown. 12, 5, 1972. Now, you'll add up your month, day, and year. In my case, one plus two equals three, zero plus five equals five, and one plus nine plus seven plus two equals 19. We don't want double digits, unless you have two numbers that are identical. For instance, 11, 22, or 33. These numbers are special in a sense that you would calculate one plus one equals two, or two plus two equals four, and this resulting number is an extra power number. So whatever the number translates to, meaning-wise, will be extra strong for you. Okay, getting back to my number. So, three, five, and 19, which we add the one plus nine, giving us 10. So altogether, my number adds up to three plus five plus one because the 10 is reduced to one plus zero. And in fact, my birth or life path number equals nine. 
Okay, now to figure out your name or expression number is a little more involved. Using the chart shown, you'll take your full birth name and turn it into numbers. So my full birth name is Willard William Sheets. This will translate to the following numbers. So in fact, my name number is three. So let's break down the meaning of these numbers. So your life path or birth number is the most important number for you to resolve. It forms the foundation of where you're going, who you are, who you strive to be, your personality and traits, and also it reveals challenges and paths that you take and learn along the way. So let's go over the meanings of the nine numbers that associate with our life paths. There are numerous websites you can visit to give you the meanings of your life path and name numbers, but here's a few basic meanings that I've gathered to show you today. One, the leader. You're a self-starter with very innovative ways of creating opportunity. You've never been afraid to be the first to try something new. Your determination and endurance are powerful and will help you get through times of struggle and reach success. Number two, the diplomat. If your birthday is the second, you have a great talent for finding solutions. Your intuitive and unbiased nature allow you to see all sides of any situation and advise others toward the most fair and beneficial outcome. Number three, the socializer. Expression comes naturally to you. You're very skilled at communicating your thoughts through conversation and creative pursuits, and your upbeat charismatic presence inspires others to get on board with your ideas. Number four, the worker. With a four birthday number, you bring stability and rationality to any situation. You are the rock and your hard work and perseverance make you a dependable friend, colleague, parent, and partner. Number five, the free spirit. Flexibility is your forte. When life throws you a curveball, you can easily adapt to the new circumstance and find excitement in the unexpected change. This ability to turn on a dime gives you the power to jump on brief opportunities others may miss. Number six, the nurturer. If your date of birth is the six, then your heart is your gift. You are a natural born nurturer and have a great talent for helping and healing others. You're the epitome of self-sacrifice and a fierce protector of those you love. Number seven, the intuitive. You possess a very refined mind and a deep urge to uncover life's mysteries. Your ability to acquire vast knowledge on both the informational and spiritual planes gives you a greater awareness than most. Number eight, the power player. With a birthday number eight, yours is a story of success. Your talent for setting and reaching goals is like no other. You're self-sufficient and capable and hold a great amount of power to achieve your ambitions. And finally, number nine, the humanitarian. It's your compassion that makes you shine. You're devoted to helping the greater good and have a strong talent for speaking up for others. Your soul is most satisfied when you're giving and being of service. So let's go over your name number or expression number. You can research, and again, using the numerous sites available for numerology, your given birth name, and in contrast, use it to see the many twists and turns in your life revolving around its number. You don't have a lot of choice here. Because this was the name that you were given by your parents, and for the most part, it is what it is. But in fact, knowing your name number that was given to you, you can use it to help guide your life in a different direction. Your name number is also called your destiny number, as it reveals that which drives you toward manifesting your fullest potential, which you must achieve to fulfill your mission on Earth. Every letter of your name shapes your reality. The vibration of your name literally shapes your world and your perceptions and is in fact your unique representation of your presence on this planet. So this being said, let's go full circle back to talking about our craft name. You now have the opportunity to give yourself a witch name and in turn mold this name to match your birth number giving you an extra bang for your journey down this life path you've chosen. So for instance, my craft name is Menanen. When you break this down numerologically, is that even a word? I don't know. Anyways, it equates as the following. So as you can see, my birth number and my craft name number are both nine. This is your goal when creating your craft name. Try your best to get your craft name to match your birth number. Do this by rearranging the letters or even dabbling with alternate spellings. For instance, if my craft name was truly Manon, which is a five, I could spell it Manon, and now it's a matching nine. So why does the name have to match your birth number? Well, you can't change your birth number, that's for sure. But you can change your name and match the birth number quite easily. 
By doing so, you are in fact aligning yourself with that same vibration and energy of the moment you were born. This is very powerful and will supercharge your specific journey moving down this path you've chosen. So give it a shot and see how it turns out. Numerology is a very unique and powerful magical system. It can help guide you through many decisions and circumstances that might otherwise leave you undecisive and possibly waning in your confidence in the decisions you've made. So using numerology, especially being the magical witch that you are, you can at least know with confidence that the decision you made is magically tied into and aligned with your birth and destiny number. This system can get extremely intricate, going the same path as astrology, for instance. This being said, I recommend if you're interested in numerology moving forward, visit different websites and check out some books and other YouTube videos and learn as much about about it as you can, as I can only show you the very surface of this amazing system. My main focus here was really about getting you familiar and helping you with choosing a magical name. The numerology part of it just kind of relates to it, so I had to go there and dabble. Well, that's it for this episode of Witch Into Working. Do you have a craft or magical name? Let us all know what it is in the comments below. And does its number match your birth number? If so, what is it? Hell, if it doesn't, what is it? And what does it mean to you? Hit that subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up or down, your choice either way. I love you guys and gals. Until next week, blessed be.